serving swami now uh, serving as swami scribe during the formalization of the valmikas curriculum writing down the nectarian directions and words of bhagwan himself as he developed this program in 1978 her marriage to mohan ram was performed in the divine presence of swami at white field after emigration to the us in 1987 at swami's direction she and mohan ram along with their twin sons varun and arun settled in laurel maryland where they still live now delighting in a company of four grandchildren mrs geeta was an award winning kindergarten teacher for 22 years and has served as ssc coordinator and vice president of the shri satya sai south pedesta center she currently serves as advisor to sss gc zone 1 which includes canada usa trinidad and tobago and the virgin islands usa She also acts as advisor to SSS GC Zone One Ladies Wing. Over the past 25 years, at Swami's command and with His blessings, Geeta has been sharing her treasured experiences with devotees all over the world. She is a gifted and highly sought-after speaker who is able to transport her audience to another time and place with her experiences with our beloved Lord. We welcome you, ma'am. मुखम करोति वाचालम पंघुम लंघयते गुरु यत कृपा तमाम वंदे परमानंद माधवम ऑफरिंग माय मोस्ट लविंग सैल्यूटेशंस एट द फीट ऑफ आवर बिलवेड ओमनी प्रेजेंट स्वामी सेइंग साई राम टू ऑल द यंग एल्डर्स एंड ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स एंड फेलो पैसेंजर्स ऑन दिस जर्नी टुवर्ड्स हिम Uh, I would like to thank you all really for inviting me here this evening, because this is my wonderful way of doing namaskaran. Many of you uh, here are wonderfully talented bhajan singers, though I can sing a little bit. But speaking about Swami, sharing his Bhagavatam Sai Bhagavatam and his glory with fellow brothers and sisters has uh, has always been my way of doing. is now ms parana so thank you for giving me this opportunity this evening i would like to say sai ram to shri sns murthy garu his wife nirmala garu whom i have known for a long time there have been inspirations in my own life for having served swami with so much devotion and love and you have them as your guiding leaders here in this place you have shri Dwarkanath Garu and his wife also. I know who have been here from the beginning. I know a few people by name. I know a lot of you by uh, just recognizing your faces. And I also want to thank Brother Vinod and his committee 
for really having me here to do this Namaskarana today. I am really, I'm standing for the film of the name of the company as from Vasman Moody here, that I have appreciated the way that he has very methodically organized this program. Uh, he has sent me the WhatsApp messages, the emails, and it has been very um, clear and very well organized. So I really, really do thank you. Having said that, I think uh, today's topic when we discussed, uh, we thought that living a life with Sai or at his lotus feet may be a wonderful way for all of us to really think about him. Because all of us who are seated here have decided to live our life with Swami's message. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here on a Sunday evening sitting in this hall. We've all decided. Some of us have decided in different ways. Maybe we are very oriented towards doing seva. The others may be singing bhajans. Some others may be gurus. Some others may be just housewives even, taking care of their parents or in-laws. But we have all decided to live by the message that we have loved that Swami has given. For me, as the sister was just introducing me, uh, for me, I have had the wonderful good fortune to have been born into a family that recognized Swami very early in his avataric mission. My grand uncle, that is my father's uncle, my grandfather's elder brother, Sri Sheshigiri Rao, went to Swami in 1943. And when the Puttaparthi Mandir was built, Prashanti Nilayam was built in 1950, Swami asked him to become the first priest there. He was not a priest by profession, he was just a pious, a uh, Hindu Brahmin uh, gentleman who worked for the PWD at that time. But Swami gave him this new job, he learned how to do it and he became the first priest there. So because of this wonderful, whatever the past karmas were, were I was born into this family that had already recognized Swami, accepted him as Bhagwan in their lives. By the time I even came into the picture, by that time they were all old devotees of 15 or 16 years. So for me as a child, you know, I re never really knew anything different. We had the picture of Sri Rama, we had the picture of Krishna at home, we had Lord Shiva and we had Swami. The only difference was that this Bhagwan came to our house every month for dinner. He was into everything in our life. So the question was that living a life at Swami's feet, you know, as wonderful and as amazing and as fabulous and fantastic, I don't have enough words to describe it. It was also very difficult for me as a child. Because every movement, every thought, every word of mine, or my brothers for that matter, or any one of our families, Swami would know exactly what we were up to. So as children, we never, we got away by being mischievous with our parents, but we never got away being mischievous because Swami could come home and say, what were you doing in school last week? Where is your marks card? Why were you talking in the math class instead of making notes? So this was his constant presence in my life. And as a child, I didn't realize the wonderful good fortune I had. I would always wonder why he seemed to target me while my older cousins seemed to get away with it. They didn't either. I mean, I'm sure he got them in their own time, not always in the presence of others. But for me, the running thread of my life was Swami's omnipresence. Whatever I did, wherever I went, whatever I said, it would be a part of the conversation when Swami came to our house. But the earliest memory I actually have of Swami, which must be because he is divine and Bhagwan, because we don't remember so far back into our childhood, most of us. But my earliest memory of Swami was is when I was two and a half or three years old child. And at that time, Swami had a small Morris minor car, which he was not using much. But So whenever we went to Puttaparthi, which was a very, very difficult road, I'm sure you are all veterans here and you all have study circles, you all know the difficult journey, the hundred miles that we now make in two and a half hours, used to take us almost eight to ten to eleven hours journey to get to 
uh, Puttaparthi. My old time journey is almost nowadays the youngsters can't even imagine. We had to go in a tanga from wherever we live, from Jainagar or Basmangudi to the Bangalore railway station, take a narrow gauge train. The train used to go so slowly, the bullock carts and cyclists would be overtaking the train. It was so slow. And then we had to, and by the time it left, Bangalore around uh, 2 or 3 in the afternoon. It would reach Penukonda at 3 a.m. And the halt there was only for 2 minutes. So in those 2 minutes, all the luggage which we used to carry to Puttaparthi had to be brought out. And we had to carry everything from matchbox to vegetables to rasam powder to sambar powder to everything because nothing was available in that small hamlet of Puttaparthi or small village of Puttaparthi. And then from Penaconda, you would have all read these things, but you know, somehow Swami is making me share those old journey because life is a journey. So that was the journey of my childhood. So we would go from Penaconda to Bukapatnam in one bus. That bus driver's mood, the, the going from Penaconda to Bukapatnam depended on the bus driver's mood, whether he wanted to go, whether there were enough passengers in the bus, he will say, I'll go and eat and come, you all sit in the bus. So somehow based, and at 3 a.m. we would all get down. Penaconda, it is now such a busy railway station, but at that time it was a concrete block. You just had to jump off the train. Sometimes I think that uh, parents and elders were so busy unloading all these trunks, you know, we used to have those metal trunks and hold-ons because we needed the hold-ons to sleep there in Prashantinari, there was nothing there. In that uh, thing, they would always tell us, when we all jump out, you people jump out. They used to tell us children because they will probably leave us in the train, which would continue <laughs> somewhere else. So we would all jump out 3 o'clock, we would sleep on a dari like this. And then about 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., a couple of men who would have accompanied us, mostly ladies, few men, because all were working. They would go and bring some milk for the children to drink. The villagers would refuse to sell milk to us. They'd say, why are you going to see that madman there in that village? You city people have no better business. Why are you going there? They all did not like us visiting Prashant in India. There was no Prashant in India yet. So Puttaparthi. So, with all that, we would arrive somewhere in Bukapatnam. Then from Bukapatnam, we had to take a bullock cart to the banks of the river Chitravati, get down there and walk across. It was a sandy river, not much water across. And arrive in Prasanti moment. But the greatest ending to that journey was Swami would be standing on that rock there across the river, waving his handkerchief at us, come, 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 vachara, 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 chala. We have become very tired. He would have told his sisters, Venkama, or my grandfather who lived there once he went to Puttaparthi in 1943. He never came back to Bangalore. He lived with Swami, taking care of Swami. So he would have told a few villagers to cook some food for us. Vastuna, the Bangalore Bhaktilo, he would say. Bangalore Gumpo. Bangalore Gumpo, he would say. They are coming. So we would have them. So that was my journey. So my that is one memory I have of a slightly older days, but my memory as a three-year-old, I remember once my father had a small black standard super ten car. I don't think they even have it anymore or anything. I remember the number also, MYB 9897. I was three years old. And Swami used to come in that car many times to Bangalore with us. Sometimes he would stay with us, sometimes he would stay with the uh, Divan's house. So it depended on where he stayed. But my father would bring him in the car. And it was a funny journey, you know, Swami would sit in the front seat with my father. My mother, myself and my brother would sit in the back seat. And Swami would be in the front. So we would come. We would come to Penaconda and it would take us a long time to reach Penaconda. Swami would leave after morning bhajan around 10.30. By the time we came to Penaconda, it's almost 1 o'clock. We used to pack the food and all that. We would stop under a banyan tree and they would have a little carpet. Swami would sit under the banyan tree and eat with all of us. And uh, then we would come. So one particular trip, we were coming. That time, for whatever uh, reason, Swami brought one other person with him. One person called Murli. He used to look after Sai Gita. He was like the Mahut. So he said, I'm going to bring Murli with me. So Swami and Murli in the back seat. My mother and my brother, 
uh, and my brother who was a little bit older to me was in between Swami and that person in the back seat. My mother and I were supposed to sit in the front seat. For some reason Swami said, no, no, uh, um, Jagdish, you sit in the front, Gita Mama will sit on my lap and come. Because, uh, you know, it's a long journey for Kamlama to have her sitting on her lap for soon. Many times he was doing that, that particular time I sat on uh, Swami's lap from Prashanti Niliyam and the car will go up and down and up and down because there was no road, it's a bullock car uh, track so it will go up and down, banging, this and that and sitting there and my, I had short hair even then and I used to sit there and I was a fidgety three year old I would move my head and my hair would hit Swami's face so my father, who was a, quite a serious person, he would keep looking at me through the wind, you know, the mirror in the car and thing, and glare at me, telling me not to move. Because every time I moved my hair, then he saw his face. So don't move. He would keep on glaring at me. And my mother knew that I am fidgeting. And every few minutes she'd say, Swami, I will take her, Swami, to my lap. And Swami said, no, you sit down. And then he will tell my father, hey, Padmana, Look in the front and drive. Why are you looking in the mirror all the time? She is sitting quietly. So this went on. And we reached Penaconda. Then uh, the, that particular day we had left after lunch. We left and by the time we left Penaconda after Dupapatnam Kothuchalmana, that we started to come. Must have been around 5 o'clock in the evening. 5.30 was in those days. Prashanti William Bhajan was at 5.20. I was sitting, I must have fallen asleep or something leaning against uh, Swami's chest, you know, leaning. And suddenly, this was my first lesson of omnipresence, which is why I said my life started off with that threat. Suddenly, I heard Om in the car. So my parents were not good singers. My mother did not sing or my father did not sing, none of us. So I must have been very young and I woke up with a start thinking somebody is singing in the car. Sometimes Swami used to sing actually in the car. But it was not Swami's voice. I woke up with start and I looked everybody is, uh, my father is driving, my mother. And suddenly I realized that this home is coming from Swami's chest. From Swami's chest. So you know, I'm a curious child. So I'm leaning back somewhere to find out what is happening. I don't know what is happening. And then clearly in those days, uh, the Ganesha bhajans, the Namavalis were not being sung in the beginning in Prashanti Nelium. They used to sing song, one song you may be all familiar with, Shri Ganesha, Shivuni Kumara. That song we used to start bhajan in. So I suddenly hear Raja Reddy is, you know, in the old, uh, you might have heard his uh, talks and everything in YouTube. His voice coming from Swami's chest, Shri Ganesha, Shivuni Kumara singing. And then the ladies are singing like this. And I'm happily kneeling and listen. And I looked at Swami in surprise. There was a small child and Swami said, Bhajan is going on, sit quietly. Quietly. So I'm sitting quietly. After a while, my mother was wondering why there is so much silence. No fidgeting is happening in the back seat. No mischief. She turned around and Swami just said, be quiet. And put in Swami, with his eyes closed, completely enjoying the bhajan in Prashanti Niliyam where these wonderful great devotees like all of you were singing with so much devotion. So we cannot take what we do here week after week, day after day lightly. It is reverberating in his heart if we are singing with our heart. We are singing with our heart. That is the key. And then the bhajan completely, then in the end I heard my tata, my Nandakal who was there, Jai Bono Bhagavan Shri Satya Sai Baba Varu. He used to say, till such time, almost 14 minutes, I could hear the whole Prashantini of bhajan on the way from Peraponda to Bangalore in his heart. That, I don't think I realized the strength of that. But much later, it suddenly said, oh, all over the world, you know, much after these Akanda bhajans started, the global Akanda bhajans, all over the world, these bhajans are going on. How if when even one person is singing with devotion, how it must be echoing in Swami's heart? How it must be echoing in Swami's heart? So my life 
my first realization of omnipresence and what Swami says, I am in your heart, you are in my heart. That realization came to me a little bit older and that was how my life thread of omnipresence. So it was amazing to have this Bhagwan talking and speaking not only to me but to all of us. We have all had the good fortune even if we have not seen his physical form. We can hear his voice, we can hear his discourses, we can see his videos and he is with us every moment of our life. So that is how my life started and with every little thing he was there. So he was there my Bhagwan in whose heart I could hear bhajans. Then he was there my friend. I remember once when he had come to our house in Jainagar here. I was a small kid and I was into reading a lot of these Enid Blight books. I don't know if the youngsters these days know about these Enid Blight books but at least people of my generation may know. I used to read and I had read some description of daffodil, of buttercups and uh, uh, bluebells in that book. And I didn't know, I had not seen those flowers in India. I must have been eight or nine years old. And Swami would always have dinner in my room, in, in, in the bedroom somehow. He liked to have dinner then. And in those days he was not having dinner with all the devotees. My parents would have him separately have dinner. Because Swami as it is ate so little. If there were so many people, he hardly ate. So he used to be separate. At that time, when my mother was still bringing some plates, Swami entered the room. And he was looking at my bookshelf and saw a whole lot of Eric Blighton books. Oh, Yem Chathitunna, oh, what are you reading? I said, I don't know, Swami, I'm reading Eric Blighton books, some uh, famous five or something. Oh, and then he said, what did you read? So I said, I read the story books, Swami, it was very nice. I was a little kid, I used to talk to him very freely. But I don't know what is this bluebells and uh, buttercups, Swami. They are describing. And Swami, how oh, many can you go? He said, you don't know? Bluebell and that bell look blue. It's a bluebell. The flower looks like a blue. <laughs> he explained like that. Buttercup and buttercup. He said, it's not. And he materialized a real bluebell and uh, buttercup flower in his hands to show. So this was my buddy Swami. But I don't know anything if I know Swami. I don't know Swami, what is this? He will bring it out. So this is the miraculous part. That is okay. We will come to other even greater miracles of Swami. But for a child, he will. So whatever, some, once I remember, all my cousins, after bhajans, Swami used to materialize some uh, chalk, you know, this uh, Paris peppermint. In those days, we used to get that green colored uh, <laughs> hard candy. He used to materialize that and give us every time after the budget, all the kids. And I remember, like I said, he was a friend too in my growing up years. Once I, I was very talkative and I used to say whatever I wanted to say in front of Swami, much to my parents' uh, irritation many times. I said, what Swami, every time only this Paris peppermint, we are so bored of eating. <laughs> bored every time Swami, why you are meditating only this one Swami? So what do you want to eat? Cadbury's are better Swami. So for a while after that, Swami would materialize Cadbury chocolate. <laughs> so he became a friend. Then as I grew in my teenage years, he became quite a strict parent. A mother who was very observant of how I dressed, how I spoke, how I laughed. As a father, very strictly asking me, what are you studying? Why are you? Uh, talking to somebody in the class. Once I remember, I studied in the Institute of Home Science. This was later. I, Swami asked me to do early childhood development in those days. And there was one particular teacher who used to teach us what is called as extension education, where we are supposed to go into the rural area and teach uh, the villagers hygiene and this and that. She was not a very expressive teacher, so I used to become very bored. So many times I had a very good friend who was doing commerce. She didn't have uh, practical classes, only morning classes. So I used to take her to the class with me. She was not in home science at all, but I used to take her to the class. She used to sit in the class. There was no security in all that. She used to sit with me. She used to come from Shankarpuram. And then I used to say, hey, come here today, extension education, boring class, you come and sit with me. So we used to sit in the back and we both used to read books in the back of the class. Sure enough, we will see, without paying fees, 
one friend attending the college with you and without listening to teacher going on reading books and he would joke but then you would know and once he told me okay mistake twice che vachu twice i will advise third time i will punish he said don't commit the same mistake more than two times <laughs> so that was the end of my so this was this friend swami who knew everything about me sometimes it was really nice but sometimes it was a problem because everything in you like why are you for i once i think i mentally i asked him when he was sitting like this and think i internet content gentlemen there are so many people in the world go behind them we have a content gentlemen why always behind me you no know? you are always next to me behind me i for some time i want a break don't come next to me behind me i know so he told my father chudu and sitting there and i'm thinking like that he found some fault or the other with me that day also and i'm thinking oh, all the time behind me no why can't he go behind his cousins and all are there <laughs> they were very good people actually well so he was my father was sitting down children me go through is and see your daughter she's telling me not to go behind her all the time <laughs> so this was my swami the all present childhood friend omnipresent bhagwan omnipresent mother my husband mohandra has uh, come here with me today he got us married we didn't even know each other's name his parents were in delhi we were here swami picked him told me you marry him we got married but the funny part of the whole thing the reason why i'm saying is he was also my mother that omnipresent mother loving loving mother so he suddenly told us in brindavan my father and i my i had an aunt in delhi and she had written a letter to my father saying there is a very good sai devotee family here in the sai center in delhi i believe they have a son working in la so since geeta wants to marry only a sai devotee boy it is saying like a nice family do you want to ask swami because we didn't do anything without asking so do you want to ask swami so my late father every time he would ask me shall i ask and the usually some non devotee boy or some malayans would come i would say i am not marrying a non devotee boy or that and my father in those days in the 70s there were not this many devotees so my father would say if you keep on say like like that to every good boy it will be very difficult i was happy like why should i get married i am not her i used to say like this that particular letter we were going to brindavan and my father my aunt's letter came and uh, my father said shall i ask uh, swami about this so my father was very quiet person as soon as murti ga we know very quiet he spoke very little opposite of me <laughs> so he asked me and i said look you go inside brindavan you will ask swami something swami will tell you something and when you come out you will tell the whole conversation in one line swami said yes or swami said no what did swami say did you tell him properly what were its swami is nothing it says swami i asked swami swami said yes or i asked hey swami swami said no something like this so i said i don't want this type of answer i am the person getting married no so he has to tell me it is not enough to tell you you look at my arrogance at that young age in the 70s nobody was talking like so my father got very from basva from jainagar to vrindavan he shouted at me he said what is all this nonsense you are talking swami doesn't talk about marriage to the actual young girl like that he will talk only to the parents what is this nonsense you are asking my mother shouted at me and i said you can shout at me but whatever it is swami has to tell me because you don't come and tell me properly what he said so this whole uh, scolding went on and my father said i am not going to ask him anything well, i can't tell swami swami tell kita he said what are the parents for parents are here to do their duty i am not asking. by the time they arrived in brindavan it was pouring rain that day and in those days the sai ramesh hall was not there just the tree was there with the krishna you would have seen in videos so we got down and by that time the sevadan from the gate came running and said swami is not going to give darshan to you so much rain everybody was huddled under that uh, little canopy there was bhajan was going on my mother and i near that hostel uh, that saraswati there was one tree there 
So we both just got out of the car and we just stood near the tree. My father parked and he was supposed to go inside. So he ran inside. But by the time I ran, Swami got into the car. Asked my father also to sit in the car. And he came out and gave darshan to everybody in the car. Because it was raining. You see how I went. So they were singing. He gave darshan. And then he got down near that tree, near the Krishna. So that they could give arati. And as uh, uh, they finished the arati, the bhajan was told, he said, wait, wait, my mother and I were near that other tree. He called me. This, my father has not had time to tell Swami about all this yet. He has to go in after darshan. He called my mother, he ran. And in front of all these people, in fact, brother uh, uh, Vinod was talking about Brigadier uh, Sheshmani. They were all singing that day. In front of everybody, Prabha, Sridharan, Kalyani, Aite, all the singers were there. He caught my ear in front of everybody. Hear me? What I had said in the car to my father, I am the person who has to get married. Swami has to tell me, not you. My father said he doesn't have time to have all this conversation with you. So I said you are all the time we are singing Kalaya, Tasmai Namaha and all that Kala Kitaya and all these budgets. Time is in his control. What do you mean he has no time? He is beyond time. How can Swami not have time? Some nonsense like this I told him. And in my ear, he said, I am Kala Kitaya. I am Kala Kitaya. Time is in my hands. I must tell you only about the boy, not to the parents. Padmana won't come and tell you. You are my whole conversation from Jainagar to Prindavan. Swami narrated in front of everybody in the middle of the bhajan. And then he said, you know, that you tell that boy's family to come on Sunday. This was Thursday. Tell them to come on Sunday. I'm fixing your marriage. Go home. So we came home. You can imagine my poor father. He had to call Mohan Ram's uh, uh, father and mother who lived in Delhi. They have not had this type of an interaction like our family has had. So he went and called them after getting their number and introduced himself. My name is Dr. Padmanabhan. We are signing devotees and all that. We are just coming back from Vrindavan. Swami is saying that he is going to get my daughter married to your son. They don't know anything. Uh, can you please come to Bangalore? We don't know if they are that type of devotees who will come like that, just listening to somebody. They heard this if they have to ask our son. They called him, I believe, in Bangalore. He said, if Swami said there is nothing, you people come and marry her. I don't know who she is. <laughs> I don't know who she is. So this is all very nice. He settled my marriage as a parent would. But the fun part came. The next day on Friday, my mother and I, we were supposed to go to Mangalore for Balavika's Guru's training program. I was one of the speakers for that. For all the Guru's training, I had to go as one of the trainers. And my mother and I were supposed to leave. So my mother said, Swami, we have to go to Mangalore. You are telling that boy's family to come on Sunday. We are only coming back on Monday. So Swami said, no, you send uh, Kusuma Kumari and others. You don't go. Uh, he said, you go on Friday, start the program and come back on Sunday. Then my mother said, she is also speaking, Swami. He said, no, 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 don't take her. And then he told her, don't take her. By the time the boy comes to see her, she will look so tired, he said, no. <laughs> She will look so tired. So this was the mother Sai also in my life, who made sure that I was looked okay for the boy's family to meet me. You know what? All of us who have gone through arranged marriages, we know how the parents take care of the children at the time of marriage. So this was one type of Swami. Uh, it was a part of my all the time, all the time, giving me advice how to. But the beautiful advice he gave me on my wedding day after the marriage in the evening. He called us, I think everybody was sitting, standing uh, right in front of the hostel. He called me separately for a minute after giving everybody Pada Namaskar. And he said, Chiru Pangaro, I have told everybody you are like my daughter. I have told this boy's family you are like my daughter. So your behavior, my good name depends on me. How oh, you behave? It depends on me. Other, and look at him, isn't it? He loved him. He, he. Swami, you know, he told in his voice, Swami gave us this girl. If they say like that, how happy it is. Swami gave us this girl. 
or same sentence swami gave us the sir <laughs> same sentence intonation is different intonation me the eppudu gamanam pettu remember to be cautious of the intonation in your life same thing same sentence swami gave us this girl swami gave us this girl. he mimicked the voice eppudu a intonation gamanam pettu life so that was the in my giving me the most beautiful advice so that my life towards him the other thing he told me you don't know this boy but i know this boy he will bring you nearer and dearer to me and this was for my own arrogance because his family had never had interviews this and that with swami i had grown up on his lap but swami said he will make you nearer and dearer to me because he is a very spiritual person he is always conscious of swami in his life he will make you closer to him. so this is how again in my life living at his lotus feet i learned that the intonation of my life is important how i live because he said nuvem chesthe nanne tirutaru nuvem chesthe nanne poortaru whatever you do they will scold me whatever you do they will praise me my name depends on you later on he has told all of us your life is my message he has told all of us your life is my message so this was this was in my early life my married life he taught me all these things how to be a good wife how to be a good then i became a mother then he said that you know you have become a mother you have brought i have twin sons he said you bring them in the third month i will name them i took them to prashanti vilayam and uh, he was so loving you know when i went there one mr surai garu was there in prashanti vilayam he used to take care of care of accommodation in those days later chiranjeevi garu came when we went at the prashanti vilayam gate you see how we don't realize the love that swami has showered on each of us i may be telling you my personal story but if you sit down for few minutes in your own home and you think of your own life you will see how he has showered love on each one of you in different way you may not have been conscious of it that's all when we entered there he was waiting and he said swami said geeta ma has two children our room in vesakshanti is on the second floor So he said she can't carry two two babies and go second floor. You give her a room in the ground floor for three days till Namakarana Muzu. So that was we went there. He did the Namakarana for the boy. So, so this was another lesson living at his feet. I had children. I had two sons. I was a very happy mother. My husband was very happy. We were all so happy that two healthy children were born. As soon as we went into the interview room, Swami said. Ah, you have brought two boys for me as a gift. What do you want in exchange? <laughs> so you can imagine, there's a for a split second as a mother, you're wondering, ah, what is he saying? <laughs> you have brought two boys to me. <laughs> Thank you very much. What do you want in exchange? <laughs> Then I just, I didn't understand. There was a young mother, still twenty four, twenty five years old. I didn't know what to say because. just for sake of saying i can't say whatever you want because in the heart that's not the truth thing. we all say whatever you want we will give swami once i was in a funny interview i was there in prashanti niliyam some family from some other country had come swami had invited them also in the interview room this gentleman had a huge album of photographs and he wanted swami to see it every now and then he would say swami please look at that Then finally, Swami, with his infinite grace, it was a heavy album, you know. He put it on his lap, and the man sat next to Swami's chair and turned the. Oh, yes, Swami, I have built a beautiful house, Swami, ten thousand or eight thousand square feet, Swami. This is the room, Swami. This is the garden. He was like describing to this Bhagwan, for whom Brahmanda Nayaka we sing. To that Brahmanda Nayaka, he is describing this eight thousand square feet house, you know, for which we are. So he was describing. So he was very nicely looking at it. That is the Maya Manusha Vigraha, you know. As though he doesn't know anything. Oh, Chala Baba, he is very nice, very nice. Yeah. 
Then finally he said, no, no, Swami, that's not the only thing. I have made you a beautiful pujari. So we are all sitting there with many years of such, uh, we have seen exchange and I looked at my mother, oh, this poor man is in for some trouble, you know, <laughs> because he is saying, I have built you a puja room, Swami, beautiful puja room, the marble came from Jaipur, this came from Jaipur, that's all. Swami did say anything, he looked at it. I mean, that man will not, when Swami ignores, if Swami ignores, it better safer to be quiet, actually. Don't pressurize him. Again, the man is saying, Swami, please look, Swami, such a beautiful puja room. Beautiful puja. Very nice house. And Swami said, very nice house, very nice house. He said in English. Then Swami says, it's all, it's all yours, Swami, your house only, Swami, it's your house, Swami. Three, four times he kept saying, your puja room, Swami, your house, Swami, it's your house. Finally, Swami, he said, Nada, Villa no Rai. He said, <laughs> Is it mine? Write it in the will. See, because you don't really mean it, you know. Whatever, sometimes we say, no, all Bhagavan's Leela, we we'll say. But we are not thinking it is Bhagavan's Leela. We are thinking, I did it. But we are saying loosely like that, you know, it's Bhagavan's Leela. So, when Swami asked, so I had seen all this in my life. So, when Swami said, what will you give in exchange? I didn't open my mouth. Because what can I give Bhagavan? What can I give Bhagavan? So I just stood. Then he said, no, no, tell me, what do you want? You brought two gifts. I'll give you a gift. What do you want? You tell me. You want, you want tell. So I said, I don't want anything, Swami. For the children, I want them to have Shraddha and Bhakti towards you. Always, Swami, that's all. Shraddha and Bhakti towards you. Oh, Shraddha, Bhakti. You want uh, for these babies. Yes, Swami, you just bless them. They always have Shraddha and Bhakti, that's all. Oh, you think it is so easy to have Shraddha and Bhakti? To have Trikarana Shruti with Shraddha and Bhakti when all the senses are clean and pure. You think it is so easy? You have to do a lot of sacrifice for them. I said, I'll try to do whatever I can, Swami. Please tell me, Swami, what can I do? So he said, you know, children, they are like your neighbor's jewels. I said, what is this? The subject got deviated somewhere. <laughs> neighbor's jewels. I didn't understand. Sir. See, if you are going to the wedding, sometimes you forget to bring the jewels from the locker, no? He knows our life. So you forget to go to the locker. What do you do? You want to go to the reception. You want to wear diamond necklace, diamond earrings, diamond bangle. Everything in the locker. What will you do? So your very close friend will come and tell her, look, I have to go. I completely forgot to go to the locker, bank holiday. Swami told the full story what we all do. Then, then your friend will say, don't worry. I have my jewelry at home. I will give it to you. You wear it and go. So she will give you. You wear it and you go to the wedding hall, there everybody will say, oh, such a nice necklace, Gita Ma, such a nice. Will you tell them, it's not mine, it's not mine, it's my friend's jewelry? No. You'll say, thank you, thank you, my friend, thank you, thank you. You will say, you know, that you know, chapta wala. You won't tell them, but you will. Then you come home and then keep that necklace very safely. Because, why? It is not yours. It is your friend's if you lose it, even if you go and buy the same necklace, she will say, no, one diamond is little smaller than mine, you know. <laughs> so, you will keep it very safe. Next day, your friend will come, you go to your friend's house, you return the necklace to her. Will you cry because you are giving the necklace? No. Because why? You knew from the beginning it was never your necklace. It was her necklace. It came, came to you temporarily. Now it is time to go back to her. You won't cry. In the same way, the relationships, the children, mother, father, all these relationships, they come in this life due to our karma. They are there with us for a while. And then they move on, they grow up, they become big boys, they go, they find jobs, they leave your house, they go. At that time, you should say, oh, you are mine, mine, don't go anywhere, stay with me, I'll say, no. If you practice this, to teach the children that everything in this life is temporary except God. 
only he is permanent if you teach your children this and you practice this then they will get shraddha and bhakti towards me so that is not so this was my goal as a mother which taught me which taught me how i should be not my children at all times this is my duty but then one more thing swami said but when you have the necklace how did you look after as though it was yours when people said it is very beautiful very nice you pretended as though it was yours you looked after it safely no like that when the children are given to you by bhagwan you have to look after them as though they are precious they are given to you in safety you have to bring them up with morality good quality character <laughs> so this was my lesson in my journey at his lotus feet so that then as we got older growing up in america the children grew up they have got married he taught us what is it what it is to surrender to him just if we give up everything and leave it his at his feet he will take care in each way so i was remembering you know what is this journey i thought i should share this journey as i am standing here i am telling brother and i don't know what swami will make me say but as we get closer to my time i was thinking that we are all on this journey and what is it that we all want to learn at his lotus feet yes i had the good fortune of his physical presence but what is it that he he did not come just to give us that ring and the chain and showing how many presents once we know that he is bhagwan we know that he is everywhere what is there to question that so how should we be done so i was just uh, as i was sitting there i was thinking living at his lotus feet when i was in college the first the balikas program just uh, started and uh, i had the good fortune you know when swami started to plan the curriculum uh, he asked me i used to go in the evenings after college he said every day in the evening when you don't have practicals you come to vrindavan gokak uh, professor gokak she gokak our first vice chancellor of swami's institution we all know him he's a very great and famous man and an ardent devotee of swami so gokak will be here c n mangala she was the principal of the army college women's college c n mangala shanta divakar all these people will be here we are planning the program i want you to sit down and wait so that i had the good fortune for one and a half months swami would meet every two three days with these people they would phone me swami is having a meeting tomorrow you come so i would go after darshan evening darshan swami in brindavan we used to sit i used to write down all the notes whatever swami said i used to write down the notes for uh, about 6 weeks swami called me ganeshi hey ganeshi ra he used to say because i was writing down whatever he said so i used to go it was a most wonderful time of my life on one particular meeting my mother also joined uh, that meeting because there was a program in a place called davangire we are all familiar with davangire there was going to be a balikas guru training camp and nagama keshava murthy who was the um, education minister at that time she had organized it so that also all institution heads heads of schools colleges would attend that first inaugural program so kasturi garu my mother all of us we were supposed to go for that program my mother was getting the program ready and she wanted a keynote speaker for that program and she was hoping that swami would request either kasturi garu or goka uh, to come there to give be the chief speaker for that program in the inauguration and it was difficult for my mother to ask them to because in those days you know these hotels and all were not very big in damgere to put up these people but if swami tells them they will stay in some devotee's home or something so she came to the program and um, i mean she came to the meeting and we were all inside that room and uh, swami was asking hey komalama where is the next program so my mother told him so swami said what is the theme of the program so the theme of the program that mrs uh, keshavur nagama keshavurthi had planned was in kannada the name because the program was to be held in kannada was paramanandar ke prasthana which means 
journey towards eternal happiness towards paramananda prasthana means journey so that is the program meaning if we train our children in this path they will reach one day that paramananda that was the name she had given so swami this is the program these are all the speakers the regular speakers we were all there uh, normally we used to speak so we tell us speak some ahimsa kusma kumari sunanta all my mother had all the name then she said swami i need a main speaker keynote speaker swami who to invite for that program because all non devotee institutional heads are coming some ministers are also she was hoping she will tell professor goko a great man or cn mangala or any one of these great lady shanta divakar also mes college principal then swami who who is coming all this he talked with the dm goko yeah no who do you think to go up who should we ask nidhi are helidre avru swami like this everybody discussing suddenly swami says need matter he said to me i am writing down i don't know i didn't look up that also i made a note mean matter i thought he is telling somebody there in that group so i wrote down swami is in that in parenthesis swami is asking somebody to speak then i am writing there was no sound again swami hey, he said hit me on the head because i was sitting next to him i am not mad he is telling me i was in second year bsc at that time i am you should if my poor mother you know she almost fainted with shock she did not want me i or because i was a young girl and poor uh, professor gokok rajaratnam garu was there you know gp rajaratnam the great poet everybody they all looking at swami with utter shock you know what is this swami saying all these ministers are coming yagama kishan is telling this girl they all ye ganti a gokok then the poor you know kasturi uncle he was my biggest supporter he said to papa swami that poor girl is getting very scared by that time i'm shaking her i am no swami i cannot that to in kannada i have to speak i am not good at speak in kannada i can't speak in kannada swami then no swami there sir swami is saying yeah, why you are speaking kannada at all what is that you think no no swami that to this paramananda ke prasthana i don't even know the meaning of the words what is this paramananda ke prasthana i don't know swami the poor kasturi girl said to swami she can't speak so she is getting very tired and this thing then what go call what is it? he was very diplomatic he said swami if you give her the strength to speak she can speak <laughs> He said, "What a beautiful answer, isn't it? If you, who is the puppeteer, can make you make her speak, she can speak." Ye nam tiya kasturi, Swami said, "Because kasturi is a daughter, daughter." Goka khela thora nija maati the Swami says, "What Goka kisa?" So in this process, my mother is saying, "No, Swami, no, Swami. I don't want that, Swami. You please tell one of these great people to come." So what is this coming up now? When a young person speaks in front of all these people, they will feel. But young person, see, young people, we have to encourage. That is what was showing with his example. Then, no, po, po, matla or po. He told, go and so. So Swami, I don't know what is this Paramananda, ke Paramartha, and Paramartha, and all that type Paramananda. I don't know what. He comes to Paramananda, Monty, he me. Then I am having some happiness. happiness kaadu eternal happiness no sadness adi paramananda then prasthana i don't know swami prasthana hai nen chapistan chatte he said i teach you you go and tell exactly what i tell you go and tell he said like this so at that time I wrote it down after I came home. I just had it there for reference, just in case I made a mistake. So I'm saying, see, I'll tell you what is prasthana. Prasthana means journey. And go and get prasthana. Journey, Swami. So journey. Ha. So where is the place you come all the time? Putta Parvati. Kada Prasanti Nilaya. You come to Putta Parvati. Okay. What do you do? You leave Bangalore. So look at Swami says. Yalla Velta. Bangalore village. Putta Parvati. From Bangalore to Putta Parvati. Prasanti Nilaya. Why are you going there? Because Prasanti Nilaya is there. 
Then you get prashanti. When you have prashanti, you have paramananda, right? If you are all peaceful, you are happy. So, you are coming. So, what do you do? Huh? Yeah, Swami is so nice. Get like, get up, what am how feel we go? Basu, kaapu, rainbu, yedulu bandi. See, those days, only bus and car, train and yedulu bandi, that is gulak car was available. And not helicopter, that time, no airport in put here. So, basu, kaapu, rainbu. You go, four types of vehicles, anything you can choose. You start the journey. What is the four types of vehicles? This is all your prarabdha karma, whatever body you have received in this life. That is the four types of, you may be slow in realizing, you may be fast like the train, you may be fast like the car, you may be slow like bullock cart, but everybody is ultimately going to prasantirinyam. So, that is your walk, this body, you already have the vehicle. God has already given you this vehicle based on your past karma. So, you are then you start. There are three roads to Puttaparthi, Nanuku, Mood, Road, Nunai, Emi, Dodubalapura, Chikvalapura, Palsamatu. This is how we say you can go via Dodubalapura, you can go via Chikvalapura, you can go also via Palsamatu. If you can reach, you can go. Three roads. Emi, the three roads. Karma Margum, Jnana Margum, Bhakti Margum, you can choose whatever comes to you naturally. Karma Margum, you can do Seva. You can take Bhakti Marga, sing your bhajans, teach the children bhajans, teach others bhajans. Or the service, or Bhakti Marga, or Jnana Marga. Do your studies of the land, understand so. I tell you, see Swami is speaking. Urke Jnana Marga, just going on reading books, nothing will happen. This no prattarikada, you have to practice it. So you choose any of these three roads. So you start, say, Bangalore, then you start. Then you say, how can I go to Puttaparthi? This we are talking about 70s, right? So 74 this one, 74. Right? So what do you need? You need luggage, you need clothes. When you go to Prashantini, so you get a suitcase. Already you have a suitcase filled with vasanas, karmendriyas, jnanendriyas, all from past life it has come. Shedripus have come. You know, Kama Krodha Loga Mohamadha, already that suitcase is half full. In that suitcase, you are putting more. What is that you are putting, Kamalama? He says, my mother and daughter, this whole journey, everybody is shocked the way Swami is described. He says, in Prashanti Nidhiyam, in those days, coffee pudi led, char pudi led, tulus pudi led, there is no coffee powder, there is no rasam powder, there is no sambar powder, pudi ora chepne, no pudi ora guju, whatever powder. And the packages from Tanga and putting in the way. So already heavy luggage you are born with past karma. In that suitcase you are adding more. Yemadi attachment. Then you say attachments. Mogudu, Pitla, husband, wife, children, auntie, uncle. All that you are putting. Then you say how can I go alone? Let me take some friends with me. No, that was a boring journey. You are going slowly. So you invite some friends, do sangamundachu, sat sangamundachu. Your journey in this life, you may have good friends, you may have bad friends, many of your friends also, who are mixture of both. Everybody get into this vehicle. You start on this path, you are going on the way. Somebody will say, you know, Swami's darshan is 5 p.m. No, it, they have already started at 6 a.m. On the way, here Chikapalapuram, why don't we have some coffee? You know, stop. So, journey distraction. One distraction, you are stopping for coffee, have some coffee. Then you go a little further. As you come, you come near Lepakshi. Swami says, you know, you come near Lepakshi. Somebody will say, hey, still a lot of time is there to reach Prashant Piriya. There is a beautiful Shiva temple is there. Let us go to Lepakshi, I have Shiva Mandir, no, Darshana Chesam Vita. And then, still the yearning is there. Yearning is there. You want to see Shiva, you want to go to Prashant Piriya. But in between distraction, yen chasta prapancha. That is the word, in between distraction. Relatives, family, friends. Then on the way, coffee, then Lepakshi. Okay, you go and have, you go to the Sai Center, you do bhajan, this, that, Shiva, Shiva temple represents. After that, you will say, ladies will say, Lepakshi saris are very good. <laughs> so I was telling them, let us buy a few saris and go. No, there's still a lot of time. Sir, if you cheer, let me choose that. So, desires, just cheer, you saw God very good. 
But in the meantime, sari, bangle, matching bangle, all that, adanta inda adanta. Sorry, you will be going. Still, the desire for Bhagwan, everybody has that. It is there. We want to reach Prashanti Niliyam. Small distractions of the world has happened. Food has happened. Shiva Rama Sai Center has happened. Now you go. Then silently one doubting Thomas in this group. No, you have Dusanga, Satsanga, both Miss Dusanga, Satsanga, everybody. He'll say, Are, who, who told you I said this Chikmalapura, Devan, Hattin and all? See this Pala Samudram, this is shortcut. Let us go through Pala Samudram. So we will say, no, 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 we usually go in this Chakkani Raja Margam, straight road is there. We will go, but no, 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 he said, no, 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 this Pala Samudram is very easy. Let us go, somebody told me that is a shortcut. So he said, everybody will agree to this one doubting Thomas. Take a deviation in life. Suddenly some other guru will come. Deviation, we will go. Let us go there, Pala Samudra. So you take the deviation and you go there, then you will ask some fellow, which is the road to Puttaparthi Prasanthi? That fellow says there is no road here. You have to go back to the main road, Chikmalapura road. This road will not go to Prasanthi Nidhya. So what do you do? You come back, Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam. Go to Pala Samudram, come back. Go there, come back. Go there, come back. Still the desire is there to reach. All of us have. Come back. Then you go. Then you are going. In the car, Swami is saying, hold on, don't you love it? All your desires, so attachment, so empathy. Then you are scolding this fellow also. You stupid fellow, you told me to go there. Arne Sachari. Now we will be late for Darshan. So all this karma Kroda, everything is coming out. Huh? Then finally, after this long journey of Punar Pichanam, Punar Varana, Deviation, attraction, agitation, attraction, Swami says attraction, agitation, deviation. In those days, no Veda people and no music started. Suddenly, somebody says, Chur Swami says, somebody says, Swami has come out. And everything you will drop, Ganesha, they get up, no Ganesha, you park the car and you want to run for that shit. One more Vyama, Vyamoham person will be there. So, yo, yo, if you all run for that chin, who will look after one dollar in suitcase? Who will look after one dollar in suitcase? So, yeah, somebody will say, if you want, I will look after you all go. In the meantime, what do you will say, I don't care about my one dollar. I don't, one person will be there. I don't care about this suitcase and luggage and hold on. I want Swami Sarshan to run and sit on the sand near Vera circle, Swami says. And Swami comes out and you are looking at him. Tears are rolling down your eyes. And you are looking at him. Swami comes near Yapuracha. Swami will say, Yapuracha, when did you come? You can't answer. Because you are filled with so much of joy. After this long journey, you have arrived at your destination. You cannot talk, you just look at him. You are so filled with joy. You are so filled with happiness. And you are so filled with this, you cannot even answer. You go on looking. Swami moves forward. Again, Paramanandam. That Paramananda, if you can carry inside you and share it with everybody that you see, what happens after Swami goes, you will come. You are very happy. You will tell that person, oh, you poor thing, you were looking off the whole door. No. You go for evening darshan, I will look after the water. Back to that, I will look after you go. But for that few moments, after seeing Swami, you spread the joy. You talk to everybody. Whoever you say, can I help you? Swami saying, can I help you? That joy you want to spread to your fellow. Adi Bangaru Paramananda Ke Prastham. That is the journey. Until my journey, I am trying to elongate and experience that Paramananda all the time. But like all of us here, these are momentary experiences and then we forget because we are so enamored by the word. So I hope having lived at his lotus feet, very in close proximity, whatever little I experienced, I cannot say I learned, I can say I heard. Because I too, I am still learning and trying to practice. So whatever I heard from him, today I have tried to share with you. Sairam.
us to put up at the actually can afford to go something to put up at the but take it up before. Thank you very much. So as a token of our love and appreciation, I would uh, like to show what I'm saying. So now I would request our senior devotees, Mrs. Vasu Bhartanath and Mrs. Vajalashmi, to please honor.